here to give some helpful hints on preparing the first two portions of the Kaba team, especially for those of you who are auditioning for California All Southern or All State. Um, over the years I've had a lot of success with my students making it into these groups, so I thought I'd make a video um, for any of you that would be interested. Um, so the first thing that I would start with is suggesting that you practice slowly with the metronome. Most of my students want to come in and play it very quickly and are not playing it in time and they don't realize it. Um, if you practice slow with the metronome, you're going to get that really strong sense of time, which is really important when you're playing or you're auditioning. Um, the next thing I would suggest is to record yourself a lot. Um, I like to use the app Tunable. Um, on that app, if you have an iPad, it's really great because you can record and then when you listen back, you can see your intonation and if you, there might be any imperfections and then you can go through and mark your part and improve on your tuning. The next thing that I would suggest is really looking to do natural slurs. So if you don't know what a natural slur is, it's any time you can move note to note when there's a slur marked and you don't get a gliss. So in, uh, implementing the natural slurs is really important, especially in the second movement where you want to make it extremely lyrical and extremely con um, connected. So you want to find those places that you can put a natural slur in. Um, one of my suggestions is in measure 12, you have an E flat, B flat, G. And if you put the, if you play the B flat in fifth, you can do that measure in a natural slur, and then it emulates 
the two measures before, and so then you, you make it very consistent. So I would suggest looking for those types of places. Also in measure 20, you can play both of your Fs and sixths, and that will help with making just a really smooth slur. Uh, next, uh, alternate positions. So that's kind of what I just covered right there, but you want to be looking for places that you can do alternate positions that's going to make it easier with the slide or make it more fluid. So for example, in measure 49 and 51, when you're doing that chromatic B flat scale going down, you want to go to F and 6 because then it's just one nice progression, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it makes it a very nice fluid motion with the slide, which is also helpful and makes it sound really clean. Um, so that's another thing you wanna look for. Um, another thing that I really find important is to write in all the places you're gonna take a breath. Um, you want to not have any surprises when you're playing, especially when you're going to an audition and you're performing and you might be nervous and you run out of breath easily. You wanna make sure that you have really detailed everything that you're going to be doing. So I write in every single breath and I make sure that I can make long phrases that sound really good. If you're not thinking about it, you might be taking a breath every measure and that doesn't sound as good as it could. You wanna make really long phrases and that's gonna help with the phrasing and making the piece really beautiful. Um, one of the other things that I've noticed a lot with my students is in the first part where we have the triplets, um, a lot of my students play them too fast. And so you want to work on making them very even. So if you are triple tonguing, you want to see if you can da 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 make it very very even that they're not squished together and they're perfectly in time. So that's one of the things you can do when you're working with a metronome. So when you're recording yourself, which you should be doing as much as possible, the things that you want to be thinking about: tuning. Am I in tune? Uh, am I in time? When you go and record yourself and you're listening back, you should be counting and making sure that you're staying in time. In measure 41, right after we have these scales going upwards, a lot of times students don't realize that they're not counting and they're rushing through those dotted half notes. So you wanna make sure that you have that sense of time and you're keeping it really, really steady. Another thing to listen for, are you playing centered? Are all your notes coming out evenly? Do they all have a nice tone? Do you have maybe a change in tone when you play low or a change in tone when you play high? You want to see if you can make it really even and where everything comes out nice and clear and centered. Um, phrasing, dynamics. A lot of times I notice with myself and with students, they'll think that they're doing a crescendo, but I don't hear it. Or if I record myself, I think I'm doing enough of one and I listen back and I go, oh, that wasn't enough. So you wanna listen for those dynamics and see if you are able to get it through to the audience. And then another thing you can think about is articulation. Am I doing what's written? Am I putting natural slurs in there? Do I like this opening phrase of the way I'm articulating it? Is it too short? Is it too long? So making sure that you're thinking about all of these different aspects when you're playing to create the most beautiful music that you can make. And if you do all these things and prepare in a very detailed way, um, I think you could have a lot of success um, in your performance or in your audition. So I hope this helps you. Um, I'm so happy to be here and to try to help anyone. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching.